Greetings! In this video we are going to be looking at the Rondo on page 79 of the Christopher Parkening Classical Guitar Method, Volume 1. First let's consider the structure of this piece. This piece is written as counterpoint. Think point against point. So the bottom line is an independent melody, while the top line is another line. They're they can function independently of each other, but they also sound nice together. And that is the art of composing in counterpoint. You're not thinking in terms of a C chord, A minor, F, C. You're thinking in terms of, I have this line, and I have my high line, and can I fit them together in a way that is very harmonious? An entirely different approach to composition. And we want to be careful not to just put a guitar strumming chords, C, C, G, because that changes how the ear hears it, and it's not going to sound the same, it's not going to be the same style of music. This is written in a specific musical language, and that's why it has the affect that it carries. The structure of this piece is also in, in A, A prime, A. So it's still A material when we go somewhere else, but it's in a different place. So we start with a counterpoint written off the C major scale, then, when we get to our third line of music, it's the exact same thing, only a fourth lower. It's in the key of G now. So we went from C major to G major. And I would encourage you, when you're practicing this piece, to listen to how it is the same thing, just lower. And then when we get to the end of this line, we have a bum, 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 bum. The only thing that's different is this little lead-in to the original section. With that section, I like to do a little filigree. In order to do that, just make sure you've got a nice firm grip. It's got to be loud enough that it really projects. And focus on getting nice, strong, hard hammers into that. And it'll just jump out there, which you want. You want it to really blow into that next section strong. And we also want a sense of still moving into a C, strong arrival. So make sure that C is nice and loud when you get there. It's really tempting to play it really quiet, and it sort of fails to satisfy. Get it nice and loud. It's tricky, though. At doing it at full speed, I would only do it if you're intermediate to advanced. Let's go ahead and look at the technique of some of these passages, because they get a little tricky. Now. When we're doing something like this, if you're taking it fast, then you need to put a little extra force, grip extra firm into the fretboard. Oftentimes we're taught to put a minimal amount of effort, but we need a lot of stability because we have a lot of quick, precise movements of fingers moving against each other. And in that kind of situation, you need that extra firmness in your grip in order to be able to direct your fingers nice and smooth and quickly. Otherwise, they're too light and they can easily just whip right past where you're aiming. I've noticed that it makes a huge difference if I just, I have to think about a little bit firmer, a little bit softer in different parts of this piece when I'm playing it at 108 beats per minute. So let's go ahead and look at this first measure. This is a little weird because we have this immediate move to getting this pinky up on the third string. And our ring finger has to go from a C to a D. So we've got this contrary movement between these fingers and it's hard to jump to if we hold out that C for its entire duration. And in my opinion, it actually sounds nicer to add a little bit of pop, a little empty space between the bass notes. Here's, here's what I mean. I do one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. So with those bass notes, I'm doing three-fourths of the length of that piece. I let it last for three-eighth notes. One, two, three, mute. One, two, one, two, three, mute. One, two, one, two, three, mute. One, two, one, and so on. Here's what it sounds like. That C right there is a little sneaky. It's better usually to let it go even a little bit earlier. Otherwise, when I try to grab that, it pulls it out of pitch. So, careful with that guy but I think it sounds nice. 
It sounds fine. It sounds connected enough if we do it fast enough. So I would practice that. What I like to do is do a rest stroke with my thumb in this first spot. And then I put the thumb on its side to mute these strings and it's ready. So I'm wedging it between string three and string four it, and tilt back. It mutes the lower strings and prepares me to grab that B. And then I do just tilt my hand back down, do another rest stroke, place it on the third string, and so on. That kind of muting gives you a lot of clarity and crispness, crispness, not crispness, and control. So I would encourage you to really practice that at a slow enough speed that it becomes easy and automatic. And then as you take it faster, it's gonna to come together quite nicely. As I was saying, this first measure is sneaky because we have to get up to this B. So now that we are cutting off at three fourths of the note, one, two, three, and then I bring my thumb up and I release that ring finger. So as soon as I get to that fourth note, I release the ring finger and bring them up. And if I have a nice firm press into that third string, it gives me the stability to find that D every single time. This is getting a little complicated, but have a look. This is for those of you that really want to take this piece to the next level. So play the first couple notes, and then while I'm doing that, my pinky is free, and I go ahead and I place him on the third string, right there on the second note. So first note, I'm using my pinky. Second note, I go ahead and bring him up, and then I put a little extra force into him to grab that D. This is a lot to think about, but if you're gonna take this piece at 108, you have to start getting this detailed in your fingerings. You have to start figuring out how to get that stability to keep it nice and crisp and clean. So one more time. I'm letting the bass ring out and move my pinky down. I press into my pinky, get it nice and firm, mute with my thumb, and then place these two fingers. And the next one's pretty easy. Sometimes I have to think about extra force on my middle finger because he wants to slide onto his pad. It's a little bit of extra force and curl in there. And so on. Most of this is a lot easier. Let's just skim to see what's coming up here. Now one little trick in this measure number four, five, six, seven. What I like to do, so we have in the top line, E, G, F, as soon as that pinky is free, I go ahead and move it to this D where it's gonna be needed in a couple of notes. And here's why. If I try to go keep my pinky here and then move both fingers, I'm much more likely to miss. But if I can move my pinky in anticipation, it gives me a little stability and I just never miss that. So I would encourage you to, to look at when can I place a finger before it's actually needed and actually even put a little weight into it and it just stabilizes your hand. It, these things are really, really valuable when we start getting to just play very fast, uh, complicated fingerings. The second section, not as terrible at the beginning. I like to use my pinky to grab this D. I know it's awkward, but if you can align it nice and low and just push it down. So I'm keeping my pinky a quarter of an off, uh, inch off the string, and then I just barely move it. If you practice that nice and slowly, you'll get it to the point where you can do it consistently. this transition back to the original material. So there's just some suggestions on how to tackle the technique of this piece. If you put all of that together, then you'll be able to start taking it faster and faster, but just find a speed in which you can practice it and not make a lot of mistakes. You want to make very few mistakes, and if you can take a passage and get it to the point where you can play it 10 times in a row without making a mistake, that's a good time to turn it up a little bit faster. But if you can't get that consistency, then don't expect to be able to play it cleanly quickly. It's one of those things where playing slow exposes your weaknesses, but that's also the perfect place to buff out those weaknesses and raise your playing to the next level. Thank you very much for watching. If you find this helpful, I encourage you to like and subscribe. It'll help others to find these videos as well. Good luck and God bless.